Hi everyone, I'm David, Principal of CES Wimbledon, and I'm here today to talk to you about tennis. Here we go. Hi everyone from CES Wimbledon. I hope you're all staying safe during this lockdown. Today we're going to talk about tennis, a quintessentially British sport. Its rules, its origins, the Wimbledon Championships, other Grand Slams, plus famous players, rivalries, and funny and special moments. Here we can see on the left-hand side, Roger Federer, probably the greatest player of all time, an eight-time Wimbledon champion. We can also see Goran Ivanisevic, who won in 2001 after three Wimbledon final defeats. What an achievement. Look at this quote that you can see just outside the centre court in the, in the All England Club. If I never win another match, I don't care. Whatever I do in my life, wherever I go, I'm always going to be a Wimbledon champion. And of course, in the central picture, Boris Becker, who won Wimbledon at the age of 17. So he's the youngest ever Wimbledon champion. Both Boris and Goran won their titles from an unranked position. People say that Wimbledon is the home of tennis. And I agree. So here we go. Tennis, game, set, and match. So, tennis, what is it? Tennis court, scoring, and rules. The origins of the 15, 30, and 40 scores are believed to be medieval French. Probably a clock face was used on court with a quarter move of the hand to indicate a score of 15, 30, and 45. When the hand moved to 60, the game was over. But to ensure that the game could not be won by just one point difference, the idea of deuce was introduced to make the score stay within the 60 ticks on the clock face. The 45 was changed to 40. Players need to get up to six games to win a set and have to win by two games or by a tiebreak if it is 6-6. Matches are played to the best of three sets or five sets. Here is an image of a tennis court. You can see the various different lines. You've got the singles lines, the doubles lines, the right and left service courts. Now, serving. The server delivers the ball from the baseline. Two tries are permitted for each serve. If the ball strikes any part of the opponent's court except the service box, a fault is called. A fault is also called if the ball is served into the net or if it strikes the net before hitting the opponent's court outside the service box. After a successful serve, the ball is hit back and forwards until one player either makes a mistake or is unable to return the ball successfully. A player serving the ball may not step on or over the baseline until after contacting, contacting the ball. Okay then, so tennis, how did it start, this unusual game? Where did it come from? Well, in the 11th century, monks played the game of pom, meaning palm on a court. Instead of a racket, the ball was struck with the hand. This eventually involved in the jeu de pomme, game of the palm, in which rackets were used. By 1500, rackets made of wooden frames and gut strings were used, and the balls were made of cork and leather. By the time it reached England, where Henry VIII and Henry VII were big fans, it was played indoors. But this is very different to the modern game. It was known as real tennis and was famously played in the royal courts, including at Hampton Court Palace, and still is today. So while you're in Wimbledon, get down to Hampton Court Palace. It's only 25 minutes by train. And check out Roger Federer in the right-hand picture. So, outdoor tennis. By the 1700s, the game was becoming less popular but that changed dramatically with the invention of vulcanized rubber in 1850. The new hard rubber balls were revolutionized the sport, making it possible 
for tennis to be adapted to an outdoor game played on grass, known as lawn tennis. In 1877, the former All England Croquet Club held its first tennis tournament at Wimbledon. The rules of this tournament set the standard for tennis as it's played today. With some notable differences, service was exclusively underhand, whereas now, of course, it's overarm, but we might see some exceptions to that later. And women were not allowed to play in the tournament until 1884. The Wimbledon Championships. They moved to their current location in Church Road, Wimbledon, SW19 in 1922. It is the most prestigious outdoor tennis tournament in the world, played during the first two weeks of July every year. Sadly, except this year due to COVID-19. Here we can see some typical images of Wimbledon in all its glory. We've got the center court full of the crowds and some of the other courts. Strawberries and cream, mmm, that's delicious. And of course, the famous drink, Pims, a fruit cocktail made with fresh mint, cucumber, orange, and strawberries. I really recommend you try this if you get a chance to go to Wimbledon. And of course, the queue. You can't live the true Wimbledon experience without joining the queue. I've joined it many times with students and group leaders, and it really is part of what you need to do when you go. To Wimbledon. See you back there in 2021, but also for students coming to Wimbledon this summer, we're going to have a CES Wimbledon student and staff tournament. See you there. So, some British players. How did they do? Fred Perry, Tim Henman, and Andy Murray. Well, Fred Perry. He won the title three times between 1934 and 1936. Tim Henman, also known as Tiger Tim, had four Wimbledon semi-final defeats, 98, 99, 2001, 2002. Yes, he never ever actually got to the Wimbledon final, much to everyone's heartache. I watched all of his semi-final defeats in great pain. The 2001 match was so long due to rain delays, it actually went on for almost three days, that at one point in the match, I went out and bought a car, and when I got home, the match was still going on. It was an unbelievable match. And then, finally, ending 77 years of hurt, Andy Murray, winner in 2013 and again in 2016. Come on, Andy, you did us proud. Can you do it again? And on the right-hand side, we have Henman Hill, or otherwise known as Merry Mount, where spectators with just ground court tickets can watch the center court's live action on the big screen and follow their favorite players. The Grand Slams, the open era. This is the era of tennis from 1968 onwards. 1968, Grand Slam tournaments allowed the professionals to compete with amateurs. In that sense, the competitions opened up for everyone. These four tournaments are the Australian Open in January, the French Open in May, Wimbledon in July, and the US Open in September. Winning all four tournaments within a calendar year is called a Grand Slam. There is also an end of year season finale for the top eight men in the world called the ATP Finals. It's your last chance to see it in London this November. But unfortunately for us, it's moving to Turin in Italy from 2021. Okay, so can you recognize these seven players in the pictures? Probably seven of the greatest players of all time. We have Federer. 20 Grand Slams, Nadal, 19, Djokovic, 17, Sampras, 14, Navratilova, 18, Serena Williams, 23, and Billie Jean King on 12. 
Okay, famous players, rivalries, and moments. On this slide, you can see you can see two very famous players. We have John McEnroe at the top and Bjorn Borg at the bottom. And they had many famous matches in the early 1980s. Some really, really dramatic, exciting tennis was produced there. McEnroe also became a little bit infamous, let's say. Let's take a look at this video from 1981 Wimbledon. You can see it. Super fat. Okay, the next slide. Famous players, rivalries, and matches. Here we have Rafa Nadal and Nick Kyrgios. Woo, they've got some, let's say, a little bit of rivalry between them. And they've had a few quite strange matches in recent years. And just have a look at this moment from Wimbledon last year. Here we go. He said he would in the reaction. What do we think, boys? Look, we expected it. He's not breaking the rules. He said he was going to do it, and he's done it. Oh, oh, oh. And that leads five games to three. Process. So there you see it. Legal, but is it acceptable? That's the question. Okay. Now we see the famous Williams sisters. We've got Serena Williams and Venus Williams. And just what happens here in this match where they're actually playing against each other. Here we go. Every now and then, I suppose, Shani, do you ever get those days where one shot just doesn't work? No, I don't. Fortilla. This is like a... Mark Woodbridge, Woodford moment from court. Mark, uh... I think only the famous William sisters could actually get away with something like that. One sister laughing at the other when they've made a mistake. That's pretty funny. Now, these two players on the right-hand side, Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic, are they the greatest players of all time? Let's have a look at this rally and see what we think. Super rally, but is there another to dispute this? Is actually Rafa Nadal the greatest of all time, king of the clay? He's on 19 Grand Slams. I wonder if he can catch up with Federer one day. Let's wait and see. Stars of the future. Well, here are some possible future champions. Well, who are they and what are their nationalities? Well, I can tell you. We've got Naomi Osaka from Japan. Coco Goff from USA, Dominic Thien from Austria, and Sasha Zarev from Germany. Do we have anyone here from those countries today? Okay, health benefits of tennis. Did you know playing tennis has many health benefits, including increasing aerobic capacities, lowering resting heart rate and blood pressure, improving metabolic function, increasing bone density, lowering body fat, improving muscle tone, strength and flexibility, 
increasing reaction times and increasing mental concentration and resilience. And do you know that player on the screen? Well, of course, it's Anna Kornikova. Retired from tennis in 2007 and went on to probably become more famous in her modeling career. And she's married to the singer Enrique Iglesias. So for now, everyone, stay indoors and stay safe. But get out and practice tennis again when it's safe to do so. See you on court in Wimbledon. Bye for now.